an irrational number. I'll write that down. Any number that cannot be written as a fraction of two integers is always an infinite, non repeating decimal. When I say two integers, right above integers or below it on your notes, I'm going to just put in parentheses some examples of integers in case you forgot what integers are. Integers are just negative whole numbers, including zero, and positive whole numbers, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so negative whole numbers, including zero, and then positive whole numbers. That's what integers are. You've heard that before way back in elementary school, junior high. But any number that cannot be written as a fraction of these kind of numbers is irrational. It is always an infinite, non-repeating decimal. You guys have heard of ir the word irrational. Sometimes we use it in normal conversation, right, Stevenson? I got the floor here. Uh, that person displayed irrational behavior. What does that mean? Yeah, yeah weird. It doesn't make sense, huh? So, mathematicians use this word to describe numbers that are beyond, beyond our reasoning, our rational capacities, our logical capacities. So, when we're discovering the world and reality and trying to figure out what life is about, scientific endeavor, what, what is the mysteries of the universe, why are we here, all these big questions, we're using our rational faculties. Rational. I study a phenomenon in nature. I come to a rational decision using rational laws of logic. So, so when I say rational, and you say rational, we, we're talking about things that make sense according to our logic. Irrational is against our logic. So a number that doesn't make sense to us as human would be, before I get to that, A number I'm gonna write an example here. The square root of three. The square root of three. It's irrational. It's irrational because if I type that in my calculator, let me type that in my calculator. Let me get my calculator here. I'm at square root of three. Look what I get. It's an infinite non-repeating decimal. Notice how every number doesn't repeat itself. It's kind of strange and mysterious. There's no number that that's twice repeats. And this, this screen right here on my computer, this calculator screen, it actually just ends right here at this place. It's tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousand, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten billions, hundred. It, it ends at the hundred billions place. But you have to understand that this actually goes on forever. Imagine a fraction getting smaller and smaller infinitely. Infinitely smaller. Imagine cutting something up so many smaller, smaller pieces. That's what this is going. Going towards. 
So it's irrational in the sense that it's against our reason. We, we can't capture it. I would if I would prefer the word a or extra rational. That means beyond our, our reason, not irrational. I think it's actually a misnomer. They shouldn't have called these numbers irrational because irrational means against reason. This is more beyond our reasoning. So I would prefer the word extra. That means above, extra rational. But mathematicians called it that years ago. So we'll just go with their words. So infinite non-repeating decimal, square root of 3. It's therefore irrational. So I'm going to... We're going to approximate it. It's going to be 1.73. Okay, I just approximated it. It's not exactly 1.73. You, you saw how uh, it's an infinite decimal. So the only thing we can do is approximate it. Just approximately. Now compare that with, you put a bar here, compare that with the square root of uh, 9. Three. This is rational. And here's why it's rational. So square root of 9 is rational. Right up here, just put y. Why? Why is it rational? Here's why. I can express 3 as a fraction of two integers. Remember, integers are negative and positive whole numbers. Notice how I can express 3 as a, as a, as a fraction of two integers. Watch this. I can rewrite 3 as two integers. Watch this. Well, who can tell me the two integers? How can I write 3 as a fraction? How would I write the, the number 3 as a fraction? <clears throat> right. Thank you. Someone drank their coffee this morning. Notice, that's an integer. And that's an integer. If you can write a number as a fraction of two integers, it by definition is rational. Okay? If you cannot write a number as two integers, it is irrational. I dare someone to try to write the ra radical 3 as a fraction of two integers. If you can do it, you're done with my class today, you're done. A plus, I will call CNN, you'll be on tonight's news, you'll be on the Guinness Book of World Records. Wait, what? what? Thank you. He's now, wait, 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 what? what? If you can write the square root of 3 as a fraction of two integers, the way I wrote square root of 9 is a fraction of two integers, look at there it is. If you can write the square root of 3 as a fraction of two integers, you're like famous and stuff. Okay. Say it again? Well, so far, no one has, has done it, so perhaps you can. Would it have to be a long number? Hmm? Would it have to be like two separate long numbers? Two separate integers, okay. And an integer, again, is negative or positive whole numbers, including zero. Okay, so that's what irrational means. Okay, I can't, I can't, maybe you can't, let me know if you can't. The square root of 3, write it as two integers. It's not going to happen. Okay, so that's what irrational numbers mean. Now, go ahead and write down this table here. So go to make a simple table on your notes. You're going to put perfect squares on the left and square root on the right. And you're going to put an arrow going this way and an arrow going that way. Copy this exactly the way you see it, just up to 12. I'll give you about three minutes to do that.
Notice you got the square root symbol here. If we if we take the square root of these numbers, this is the square root. If you go from this way and you square the number, you take it to the second power, you get that. So 2 to the second power is 4, 3 to the second power is 9, 4 to the second power. See, if I'm going this way, I'm taking this to the second power. It's the opposite. Squaring and, squaring and square rooting are the opposites. The square root of 1, going that way, is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going that way. If I go that way, I'm taking the square root. I'm going this way, I'm squaring. That's all this table means. It's going to be a handy-dandy tool for what I'm about to teach you. So write it nice and neatly. It's not for me, it's for you. Now, we know what an irrational number is now. You can't write it as a, a fraction of two integers. It's impossible, as far as I know. Cortez is going to prove me wrong, though. Right at night. I'll call CNN. Here we go. Now, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take irrational numbers. That was an irrational number for warm-up. Remember when we did the diagonal of a, the basketball court? It was a square root of 5,200, and we got 72.1 or something like that for our warm-up. What we're going to do now is we're going to take irrational numbers and we're going to simplify them. Because a lot of times in math, I don't want to get, I don't want an approximation. The problem is not going to ask, what's a, what is this approximately? Because we've been doing a lot of approximate. We've been doing this symbol a lot, if you notice. Sometimes the problem will not ask, what is it approximately? We want to know the exact answer, the exact value. So here's what we're going to do. Watch. Go ahead and write on your notes, example one. Go ahead and write simplify. the irrational number. There he is. Simplify the irrational number. And here's the irrational number I'm going to throw at you. The square root of 20. Now I'm going to go over the steps of how to simplify the square root of 20. Now, is the square root of 20 irrational? Yes, it is. To verify it, the, the quick way to verify is just always have your calculator handy and just type it in. If you type in the square root of 20, watch, square root of 20, and it's an infinite decimal, non-repeating, then it's irrational. Just by typing it in, square root of 20, it's, that tells me it's irrational. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead, you made a moment. What do you mean non-repeating? Non-repeating? Okay, figure it out. Watch. Notice how after the decimal place, no numbers repeat themselves. You see that? Oh, right here, huh? What the heck? Maybe it is isn't irrational. Square root of 20. Is that what you asked? Yeah. Wait a second here. What up, Medina? That is pretty funky. All right, let me um, go back to the definition. Maybe I'm missing some of the definition. For now, if it's a if it's a long decimal, it's irrational for our purposes. Let me go back to the definition because I copied it from the textbook, but I thought it was a non-repeating decimal. Non-repeating digits. That's pretty crazy. Um, and that's throwing me for a loop. Well, let's go back over here. Let me, we're going to simplify it nonetheless. If it's not a whole number for now, for instance, the square root of 4 becomes 2. The square root of 9 becomes 3. 20 is not in this list. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're still going to simplify it. And here's how we do it. Um...
So going to write irrational underneath. Uh, we're going to just approximate it first. The approximate was 4. Point, I'm going to approximate it to 4.5 because to the nearest tenth. This is 5 or bigger. It's approximately 4.5. So this is uh, approximately 4.5, put approximate right here. But if I don't want the approximate, I want the exact answer, here's how we're going to do it. We'll take the square root of 20. Okay, I want the exact now, exact simplified. We're going to put it right here. We're going to put the exact simplified right here. We have the irrational number. Here's its approximate value. We're going to exact simplify it now. Simplify it to its exact amount. And here's the method. Um, I'm going to write rad 20 under here. We're going to break it down into two factors. You may have seen this before. Um, notice. A square root times some square root will equal the square root of 20. we got to figure out some factors of 20 that will go right here. But I want to make sure one of them is a perfect square. That means it comes from this list here that we just wrote down a little while ago. What numbers from this perfect square list, right here, this perfect square list, what number from here is a factor of 20? Four, huh? So I want to make sure at least one of them is a perfect square. So right here on the side, I'm going to put make sure one factor, doesn't have to be both, just one of them. One factor is a perfect square. That's perfect. So you guys got it. 4 is definitely a factor of 20, so to watch this. Square root of 4 times the square root of 5. I broke down rad 20 into two perfect, into two square roots. One of them is a perfect square. What is the square root of 4? So look at our final simplified version. It's 2 rad 5. 2 rad 5 is a simplified version of this. Okay? This is simplified now. So it's kind of like a simplifying a fraction. It's, it's mathematical bad manners to not simplify a fraction. I'll write this down, but if you have 4 eighths as your final answer, it's bad manners to leave a fraction unsimplified in math. We have to take 4 eighths and reduce it to 1 half. See, this is, this is simplified. You were taught this in junior high. It's kind of what we're doing now. It's bad manners to leave your final answer as a square root of 20. You have to simplify it into 2 times the square root of 5. Okay? Now, just a little FYI. If I type in 2 square root of 5 in my calculator, it will be the same answer as if I type in square root of 20. So what I want to, I want to get you in your, in your mind, you need to understand that these two values mean the same. This is just simplified of that. This is like 1 half is the same as 4 eighths. This is just simplified of that. Matter of fact, I'll prove it to you. So the square root of 20. The square root of 20 is that number. Now let me hit 2 times square root of 5. 2 square root of 5, same number. 2 times rad 5 and the square root of 20 are the same value. It's just we're talking about simplifying something. Try another one. And we're done. A couple more examples. Try example 2.
let's simplify rad uh, simplifier rad 24 square root of 24 And the definition just came to my mind. Now I understand why it's 75. I'll tell you right now for this example. I was doing another example after this. All right. Is 20, square root of 24 irrational? Yeah. It is irrational. I'm typing my calculator, square root of 24. All right. There's a two fives again. But it's an infinite decimal. It won't stop. So therefore, it's irrational. Now, the non-repeating part, what I mean by non-repeating is this. If I take uh, 1 divided by 3, that's that's the kind of non-repeating we're talking about. I mean, about this. When it's constantly repeating. But two numbers repeating after themselves is okay. So let me do that again. So 1 divided by 3, look at that. That's rational. So an integer divided by another integer, infinite repeating. So the non-repeating means it's not going to repeat itself forever. That's what the non-repeating is. But 5 and 5 is okay. Okay, so that's my bet. So back over here. Um, square root of 24. Square root of 24 is definitely irrational. It's not a perfect square. But let's simplify it. We're not going to leave it that way. Here we go. So let's break it down into two square roots. Making sure, right here, make sure one factor is a perfect square. Four and six. Four and six. So let's go back to our perfect square list right here. Four is definitely a factor of 24. So. 4 will work again. Look at 4 times 6. Here's your perfect square. This is not a perfect square, but that's okay. As long as one of them is a perfect square, you're in business. There we go. What's the square root of 4? Thank you. 2 rad 6, we're done. 2 rad 6 is a simplified version of square root of 24. Example three. Let's simplify rad twenty seven. Is rad twenty seven irrational? No, it's not. Let's see. Let me double check on my calculator. Square root of twenty seven? Yeah, it's irrational. Keep going. So let's simplify it then. We're not going to approximate this time. We're just going to simplify it and leave it as a, an exact answer. By the way, up here, we're going to have to put the exact. On example one, the exact was 2 rad 5 uh, up here. So here's irrational number. Approximate the exact simplified is 2 rad 5, just so you know. That was example one. Coming back over here. All right. It's irrational, but we can't leave it that way. Let's simplify it. Rad something times rad something. Making sure one of them is a perfect square. Two times four. Okay, that's, so two fits into 27? Three and nine. Three and nine? Which one of those is a perfect square? Nine. So look at it. Coming back over here. Which of these factors, okay, this is the perfect squares here. This is the list I'm looking at. Which of those is a factor of 27? Nine definitely is. Nine fits into 27 three times. So those are the factors I'm going to use. Good percentage. So look at 
9 rad 9 times rad 3. When I say rad, that just means radical. It means the same thing as square root. Radical and square root mean the same thing. Little FII. I'm just asking you guys know that already. But Rad 9 times rad 3. That's square root of 9 times square root of 3. Again, this is the perfect square. This is not. As long as one of the factors are perfect squared, you're in business. What is the square root of 9? 3. 3. So our final simplified version is 3 rad 3. Easy. That's us. You seen this before, Stevenson? All right. Last example. Square root of 48. Example 4. Square root of 48. Square root of 48 has a bit, you can go about it different ways, and I want to go over various ways. There's options here. You can go through it, go at it from different angles, different routes. All right, rad 48. Um, so, square root of 48 is irrational. There's no such number times itself that becomes 48. So, what's a factor of 48 from this list here? Four. Four definitely fits into 48. Watch this. 4 times what is 48? I think it's 12, right? Okay, watch this though. Square root of 4 is 2, so I got 2 rad 12. But I can't stop there because rad 12 has perfect square factors in it, so I have to break down the rad 12. Look at it. What are some perfect square factors of 12? Let's go back up here. What numbers up here fit in the 12? Four, huh? It's a perfect square. Look at it. Now I have to break down 12. So 12 is rad 4 times rad 3. Rad 4 becomes 2. So I got 2 rad 3 here. But this 2 comes down to my final answer here. Don't forget about that 2 here. This 2 that came from the square root of 4. So here's our final simplified version. 2 times 2 times rad 3. The 2 times 2, I'm able to multiply because it's a normal number times a normal number. So our final simplified version is 4 rad 3 because of 2 times 2 there. Question? Can you get this one? Can you leave it like that? No, because that's bad manners. It's not simplified to the ultimate uh, oh, okay. position. Oh, okay. you got to go all the way so you can't break down a radical anymore with, that has a perfect square factor. See, 12 had a perfect square factor. Look at 4. Remember what I mean by perfect square factor? Perfect square factors are these. This list of numbers that I just highlighted here. If it does, if the number doesn't have any of these as a factor, you're done. Okay, so that's the square root of 48. It becomes 4 rad 3. Let me do it one more time from a different angle. Look at rad 48. What's another perfect square that fits in the 48 besides 4? You may see? No. But 2 is not a perfect square, huh? From here. 16 fits in the 48. Watch. 3 times. 16 times 3 is 48. What's the square root of 16? 8. Square root of 16? Four. Let's go back over here. Look at it. Square root of 16 right here. 4. Remember going this way is the square root. So it's 4. Watch this now. So my final answer is 4 rad 3. Hey, look at it. We got there quicker. Look at it. The bigger the factor, the better because you get to the final simplified version quicker. Huh? Questions on that? All right. Um, 